How can you unlock and transform quality engineering? Is Selenium 4.11 the most important release in years? And what is Bits AI? Find out in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of August 6th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. But first, are you looking to take your automation project to the next level? Look no further than Apple Tools and the Visual AI Validation Testing Platform. Trust me, it is a game changer. Plus, you can try it out for yourself by creating a free account now by using the special link in the first comment down below and see the difference for yourself. Do you have any plans for this Wednesday? If not, I highly recommend you check out this first resource. So this Wednesday, I'm actually going to have an awesome conversation with Rajesh from Signity Technologies. They speak with multiple clients all over the world, enterprise levels. So they really understand the different struggles that people face with testing and automation. And he's going to be joining me for a free webinar on how to unlock and transform quality engineering. And we'll actually be discussing a lot of these different issues and potential solutions that you may be encountering yourself. So we're going to explore the current market scenario, common organizational struggles, and how next generation solutions can usher in a transformative wave of quality engineering. So as I mentioned, Signity works with a lot of different companies all over the world. And they're going to show some different key components of their framework called Blue Swan. That's really a progressive software testing platform and how it's helped address multiple issues in different organizations along the way. So the session is going to go over how to really speed up digital delivery, how to enhance software quality, how to cut down on expenses, and how to provide remarkable customer experience, which after all is the end all be all of all software development, I think. So register now for the webinar. Really look forward to your questions and hope to see you there. So next up is a follow the money segment with TestGrid.io. We talked about them last week, but I just saw this posted a few days ago. So if you missed it last week, TestGrid is one of the leading providers of end-to-end automation, uh, infrastructure, done-for-you type of services. They actually just secured a multi-million dollar pre-series A funding from a private investor. And this was posted on LinkedIn by the TestGrid CEO, Harry Rayo, who shared the news and highlighted the company's commitment to providing an industry-leading, bootstrapped, and profitable end-to-end automation testing solution. And this commitment has just showed the transformative growth and widespread global adoption of TestGrid over the past 12 months. And the investment is going to be used to expand TestGrid's AI-powered test automation capabilities and its global reach, making this automation more accessible to developers and testers worldwide. And you can check that out in the first comment down below. All right, the latest release of Slenum has been released this week. And what major contributor has said that it is the most important release for him in years? Let's find out. So Titus, who is a key contributor to the Selenium project, announced on LinkedIn that Selenium's native driver manager has finally surpassed third-party driver managers in functionality. So for several years, Titus has maintained the web driver's gem for Ruby Selenium users, which has been downloaded 57 million times. However, he's now encouraging users to move to Selenium 4.11 as it offers superior features. So there's a bunch of new Selenium features. For example, it uses values directly from the browser's options class for browser versions, proxy, and binary locations. It looks for drivers on a path for backward capabilities and, and ensures that the located browser is the one the driver actually uses. It also now provides thorough logging and error messages, including links to get more information. And more importantly, Selenium 4.11 uses the new Chrome for testing product to manage the Chrome browsers as well as the driver, ensuring the requested version and the match drivers are used. And to learn more, you want to check out Selenium's official documentation, which provides a detailed guide on the Selenium Manager and a bunch of other new features as well. And as always, thank you, Titus, and all the Selenium contributors for making this latest release happen. Really appreciate you all. So another exciting announcement is from the folks at Ultimate QA on a new post on Playwright that I think you're going to enjoy. And this was posted by Nikolai Advakin, who is the founder of Ultimate QA. And it actually sheds light on integrating Playwright reporters with Azure DevOps pipelines. If you don't know, Azure DevOps Pipeline is a Microsoft cloud-based CI-CD platform, and it supports integration with various tools and frameworks, including Playwright. And a key feature of Playwright is customizable reporting, which defines how the results of your tests are reported. So this post details the difference between build and release pipelines in Azure DevOps, and it provides a comprehensive guide on how to set up various reporters including the Publish HTML Report Task, JUnit Report, Playwright Report as an artifact, and RS Test Reporter plugin. 
And each reporter has its own pros and cons, and the choice depends on the specific needs and nature of your project. So this integration allows for more efficient and detailed reporting of test results, enhancing the overall development process. Real detailed, great resource for you all if you're using Playwright and Azure DevOps. And definitely check it out in the first comment down below. Hey, do you like books? As you can tell, I sure do. And do you like testing in DevOps? If so, then I have another awesome resource for you as well. So if you don't know, Tristan Lombard actually runs a monthly book club. And this month, I'm going to be covering Nomi Fiera's new book, How to Test a Time Machine, a practical guide to test architecture and automation. I was lucky enough to get an advanced copy to review this book. Highly recommend you check it out. I gave the forward for the book as well because I believed in it that much as well. You can grab a copy for the book and actually join a small group on an online discussion all about it to learn more about different practical world examples that you can implement to make your automation even better. Nomi is a world-renowned automation expert, and the insights she provides in this book are going to provide you with valuable skills that are going to help you with your day-to-day -day work. I highly recommend you join the book club and join them for this session as well. And hope to see you all there. So another company just released some new innovation around monitoring using AI. And this is how Datadog, a leading player in the application monitoring software business, has announced the launch of a new large language model, observability features, and its own generative AI assistant, Bits AI. And this large language model observability tool aims to help customers troubleshoot problems with LLM-based artificial intelligent applications, and it does a lot to analyze request prompts and responses to detect and resolve model drift and issues. And it helps to identify opportunities to fine-tune models and ensure a better experience for end users. In addition, Datadog's new generative AI assistant, Bits AI, scans the customer's observability data and other sources of information to answer questions quickly, providing recommendations and build automated remediations for application problems. This tool is designed to help customers derive insights from their observability data and resolve application issues faster to so check it out and let me know if it helps you in the comments down below. So besides monitoring and observability, another news article I found around AI is around security. So Traceable AI, a security firm, has launched a new digital fraud prevention capabilities to protect businesses from fraudulent activities across APIs and digital interfaces. This innovation is really significant in the post-COVID era but businesses face costs due to fraud. So the company's unique approach focuses on API behavioral patterns and vulnerabilities at the identity layer, providing early detection of cyber criminals. And this solution is especially beneficial for sectors like financial services, healthcare, retail, telecommunication, and governments where secure APIs and data protections are crucial. So Traceable AI's new capabilities include constructing a unique fingerprint for each user's identity and behavior, and leveraging graph machine learning to uncover hidden correlations across various dimensions for enhanced threat detection. The company's CTO, Sanjay, emphasizes their dynamic and adoptive approach to combating digital fraud and API abuse, aims to anticipate threats and provide organizations with an advantage in safeguarding their digital assets. So in a security follow the money segment, Ender Labs has successfully raised $70 million. So Endeavor Labs has successfully raised $70 million in Series A round funding just 10 months after its inception. And if you don't know, I've never heard of Endeavor Labs before. It's a DevSecOps platform, and it plans to use the funding to develop efficient application security programs that eliminate the developer productivity tax. And the company's foundation is built on open source software governance, aiming to help teams select and maintain high quality and secure open soft software from the outset. And the company CEO, Varun, emphasizes that Ender Labs is meeting an urgent need in the market. With new funding, the company plans to go bigger and broader, focusing on building efficient application security programs that let security and development teams address the most critical risk. All right, for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head on over to the links in the first comment down below. While you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools, free account offer, and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Skill News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end -end full stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.